people. Howdy, one and all, and welcome to the premiere edition of No F's Given. We tell it to you straight, and you can do what you want with it. And, as always, <clears throat> this show, as well as others in the Jazzy Groove Rainy Day podcast family, are brought to you via the power of five. If you like what we're doing, consider supporting us. From something as simple as hitting the like button to considering donations. And most of the stuff that we're talking about is free. So give us a like. And now, on with the podcast. And today's podcast is simply decisions, a.k.a. choices. Everyone must make a choice in their life. There comes a time, actually there are many times, during the course of the day, where a decision needs to be made. Do I go this way, or do I go that way? Do I say this, or do I say that? Do I do this, or do I not do this? They're all decisions. They're all choices. And every day, we have to make them. Now I ask you, what in the name of decency does that have to do with anything? And I'll look at you very smugly, and I'll say, Everything. Because everything that you do, everything that you are, is a direct result of a series of choices that you've made to get you to this point. Everything. I've heard people say, if I had a chance to do it over again, I wouldn't change the thing because it wouldn't have made me the person that I am. I say bull. That's not true. And I know that's not true because if you were to do something different, you wouldn't be the same person that you are. You would probably be a better person. So no, that doesn't that that dog doesn't hunt here. There are things I would have done. I could if I had a chance to do them again, I would. And I'd do them better. Now, it would probably not be the outcome that you see today. I'll be the first to admit that. But if it were to be better, wouldn't it be worth it? And it would be better simply because I wouldn't know about this outcome. So I wouldn't miss it. I'd be a better version of myself. So what's the miss? I wouldn't have my family and that would hurt. That would be terrible. But that would be terrible in the sense that I'm looking at it now. If I don't make the choices that I made, if I made different choices, then I wouldn't know about this family. I wouldn't be living here. 
So would I really would I really miss it? Not really. But that's not either here nor there. We're going to talk about choices as a direct result of actions. Which brings up another buzzword that we use here in this space, consequences. Yeah, we're going there. For every action, there is a reaction. Yeah, I know it was for every action, there's an equal but opposite reaction. But for the sake of this conversation, for every action, there is a reaction. In geek speak, there's a decision gate. There's an if then statement. Or there's an if then else statement. And we're going to focus now on the inability of today's modern women to acknowledge, let alone be held accountable for their decisions. As far as they're concerned, if it's not a good decision, it wasn't made by them. It was made by fill in the blanks with the emphasis being most of the time on men. We did it. We did this. We're the reason why girls are this way. We're the reason why society is this way. And although, yeah, we have had our hand in it, and yes, we are the reason why a lot of these things happen the way they happen, We're not solely to blame. And as been stated in, on many occasions in many different podcasts in this space by myself and other content creators, we know we did it. We're not hiding from it. We're not saying it's, it's actually their fault and we had nothing to do with that. No, 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 no. This is on us. We're a big part of the reason why things are the way they are. And again, you can thank the simps for that. And their all-consuming lust and their desire to have sex with women, they tell them anything. They make stuff up if they have to. It is what it is. And because they say the things that girls want to hear, girls latch onto it faster than they would if they heard something they didn't want to hear. More than beautiful, you'll never hear me say that. Ever. The closest I've ever gotten to that is when I call my wife Sweetie, which is a pet name I've had for her forever. Hey, Sweetie. Other than that, you won't hear a lot of stuff like that come out of my mouth. And you'll never, ever hear from that when I deal with people in the street. I may think it, but it never comes out of my mouth. Never let them see you sweat. There's a reason why I say that. Because if they don't see you sweat, they tend to wonder why. I got all these guys out here wanting to get with me and he doesn't. Why is that?
I'm going to find out. I'm, matter of fact, I'm going to get him just to prove to myself that I can have anybody that I want. Good luck with that. Good luck. Never let them see you sweat. That's a decision that I made that one of the better decisions that I made that it helped me um, separate the wheat from the chaff. No, you can't get with me. I don't want you. And these are the reasons why. And I tell them. One thing that I've never had a problem with. Is being direct with females. And this goes back. Years. When I first started realizing I liked girls, I saw somebody like, I straight out asked them, want to go out with me? No. Okay. I'm on, I'm already on, before they turn around, I'm already on to the next one. I've always been direct. Because for me, there's no other way. It's a waste of time. It's a waste of energy to be any other way. Do you think I'm beautiful? You're right. Do you think I'm pretty? Yeah, you'll do. Or if you really want to get to them, do I think I look beautiful? Not really. Why? You're like one of the guys. I don't think any of my guy friends are hot. Why would I think you're hot? And that will set the scene for a whole bunch of inter different reaction, interactions. Because the girl is going to make it her mission to show you she's not like the guys. Now, you already know that. But she doesn't know that. She knows what she heard, and she didn't like what she heard. So she's going to make it her mission to prove you otherwise. Or, if she doesn't, that's one less headache you got to deal with. One less headache. And it is that easy. Now, of course, you, you're not going to get there overnight. Of course, it's going to take work. Anything worth having in this life, you have to work for it. Dating is no different. And at first, you practice with yourself. And that starts with the two-week rule. Which a guy can use it just as easily as a girl. And that simply is this. The first thing you do when you get up in the morning. And the last thing you do before you go to bed at night. Is you stop. You look at yourself in the mirror. And say I like you. And go. That's it. Three words. 
and you do that for the first week. The second week, you change one word. You get up in the morning, you go to the mirror, you stop, you turn, and you say, I love you. And you go about your business. Same thing at night, before you go to bed. Just before you go to bed, you look in the mirror and you say, I love you. And then you go to bed. And you do that for a week. By the end of week two, you'll notice a change. There'll be a pep in your step. You'll be in a better mood. You may start whistling to yourself, of course, but life's a lot easier. It's a lot happier. That translates to women. Why? Because now you're in love with yourself. And because you're in love with yourself, you have a better outlook on life. And that's one facet of it. The next facet of it you got to deal with is your money. Get a job. You got a job? Get a better job. If you have to, get a side hustle. Get two side hustles. The object of this exercise is to make as much money as you can. But don't make it to the point where you lose yourself. There's got to be a limit. So that you don't lose your grip on sanity. So you, now you're looking, you're feeling better about yourself. You got money. The next thing is you have to look better about yourself. Now you don't have to dress around, go around in $1,500 Armani suits. Because then you're overspending. But a couple of three-piece suits will do wonders. Um, if you're so inclined, a chain or two around your neck. A nice pair of shoes. Nice pair of sneakers, if you're so inclined. Nice shirt, nice pants. Don't, it doesn't have to be a suit. Although if you do put on a suit, you're guaranteed to turn heads. Guaranteed. But now you look nice. You feel good. You've got money in your pocket. Get yourself an affordable ride. I'm not saying get a Bugatti. I'm not saying get a Phantom. I'm not saying get a, get a um a Maserati. I'm not saying I'm not even saying get a Porsche or a Benz. Get something nice you can afford. And there's the key word there, afford. If you can afford a Chrysler 300, get a 300. They call it a baby Bentley anyway. But if you can't afford a Hemi engine one, you get a V6. Get a Charger. If it's not an SRT, get an SRX or SXT. Same thing with a Challenger. Can't afford a Mustang with a 5.5 five liter V8? Get a V6. You got nice cars, but they're affordable. Invest 
in some smells. Get a nice, affordable, um, cologne. Get a bottle or two. Get yourself um get your, while you get your money up, start saving for a place of your own. Nothing's a, a quicker move killer than bringing a girl back to what's supposed to be your house and your mom's home. Or your mom comes home in the middle of fun time. Or your parents come, or your parents are home, or they come home in the middle of fun time. Concentrate on you. Those are decisions you can make that will make your life better. And more importantly, it takes the decisions out. Of today's modern woman. Because let's face it, pickings are slim. Can you get a more down to earth, agreeable, feminine, fit and friendly woman here in the States? Oh, yeah. But it won't be someone you'll see every day. And I doubt very seriously that you'll find it in the city. You're going to have to go outside the city. You have to be more selective in your dealings with women. You have to vet them. And how do you vet them? Use your own judgment, but don't be afraid to lean upon the judgment of others. For men, the best person for you to deal with is your mom. Because just like guys can see through guys, girls see through girls. And although you will have the final say, lean heavily on, on the advice that you're given. If your mom says, I don't think she's the one because of X, Y, and Z, Take that on board. When you buy yourself, think about that. Why would she say that? Oh, because she sees this, 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 and this. Okay, maybe I should leave her alone. Their decisions. On the female side, you must vet guys, fathers, brothers, male cousins, some sort of male authority figure that you know and you trust. You can't show your teeth to every guy you meet. I forget who wrote the song, but that lyric is on point. When someone says hi, you can say hi and give them a quick smile, but I don't but don't be cheesing on them. 
just smile, nod your head, and keep on. If the guy's interested, he'll stop and he'll turn around. If he's on point, he'll come up and talk to you. If he's feeling froggy, we'll say. If he's feeling froggy, he'll leave. You don't have to do the things that guys have to do to make yourself avail of not real approachable. Because naturally you're approachable because you're pretty, you're a woman. You can also go with the um with the two week challenge. But that two week challenge will get you to a point where you're loving on yourself and guys will come to you. And most of the battles won when the guy comes to you. You just have to make decisions that will increase your chances of him wanting to wife you. You're over his house. His room's a mess. Clean it up. Dishes in the dish dishes in the dishwasher in the sink. Clean them up. You see something that he needs done that he hasn't done yet? Do it for him. Something that he likes that he doesn't have yet. Get it for him. All those things, those decisions that you would make there. Or it's decisions that would ele that will elevate you above anyone else he's talking to or even looking at. Because you're like, she's doing all this. For me, I'm not letting this go. And he won't. Now, everything that I've told you, You can take or you can leave. It's now time for you to make a decision. Do I act on it? Or do I let it pass? Now, if you are in a position where you're, you're married, you're dating someone seriously with the intent to marry, or you're a confirmed bachelor or bachelorette, then you don't have to take it. It won't hurt to listen to it, but it's not required. If you're looking, I would advise you to take it. But then again, it's not on me, is it? As I've told you many times before, I got mine. Do you? And with that, we come to the end of another one, or actually, in this case, the first of many. Remember, we operate in the power of five. Like, comment, subscribe, notify, share. Each one of those things are free, so make no, makes no sense not to do it. If you do it, we grow, we grow, we give you more content, and everybody's a winner in the end. So until the next time, later y'all.